What's up guys? Welcome back to Cars, Cost, and Technology. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the 2021 model year production numbers for the C8 Corvette Stingray. Obviously, we're getting ready to go into the 2022 model year, but it's really cool to look back at what was popular in 2021, you know, how many cars were built, see sort of where we're at with the trends in the market. And if you're waiting to get a C8 Corvette or you already have one, it's cool to see what, what is going through the pipeline right now, how rare your car is, where it stacks up collectively against all of the C8s out there. So I love going over these numbers. Hope you guys also like the new studio setup. This is going to be where we'll be doing the news videos going forward. So hope you guys like this setup. But let's go ahead and jump into these numbers and take a look at the total production for the 2021 model year. As you can see, there were 26,216 C8 Corvettes produced for the 21 model year. As far as we know, the 2022 production is actually going to start, should be next week. Um, I don't believe GM has officially confirmed that, but as far as we know, that's what we're hearing. Now, there was some news that broke today that GM is actually stopping production at numerous different plants across the country, but it looks like they are doing that due to a semiconductor shortage or chip shortage. Now, they're going to be allocating the little bit that they have access to or the resources they do have towards heavy-duty trucks, the Corvette, um, high-end SUVs. So I don't think as of right now that's going to impact the C8 Corvette. So hopefully we'll see that continue to be produced as usual. But you never know as that continues to be an issue. It may eventually have an issue and we may see the slowdown um, for the C8 Corvette as well as we've seen numerous times for 2021. Now 26,216 units is a good number compared to last year where it was just over 20,000 total cars built. Uh, but it, comparatively speaking, that is not really a good production number, especially when you look at the numbers that they were cranking out for the C7 generation. Just for reference for you guys, I wanted to pull some numbers here if we look at the beginning of the model year for uh, the new generation of the C7. Uh, 2014 was the first model year for the C7 Corvette, and there were over 37,000 produced for 2014, 34,000 produced for 2015, and then going into its third model year production, over 40,000 produced. So when we look at the C8 Corvette's numbers, with the first model year being 2020, just over 20,000, and then the second model year being 26,000, you can see that even though it's getting better, we're still way off the numbers where it should be. Um, you could also argue that with the upgrades made to the plant, they should have the capacity to actually build C8s much faster than they were building C7 Corvettes. Um, now, obviously, it's an entirely new process, so they're going to continue to refine that. But there were some major upgrades made to the plant in between uh, the, the retooling and all the new setup for the C8 going from the C7. So we are still way off the numbers where we should be. And you can argue that the demand for the C8 is much higher than it was for the C7 even when it was brand new. So that's why we're seeing some craziness here in the marketplace. But again, I know we all hope 21 will be the year it gets back to normal. Here's to hoping 22 will be the year that it gets back to normal. But anyway, diving back to the breakdown of that 26,216 uh, cars, you can see collectively 15% were 1LT trim level, 44% uh, were 2LT, and 41% 3LT. Now you can see the breakdown off to the side. You can see that the lower trim levels were a little more popular with the coupe. So 20% 1LT, 47% 2LT, and only 33% 3LT. Where with the convertible, it's definitely much uh, higher trim levels. So 8% uh, 1LT for the convertible, 40% 2LT, and then 52% 3LT for the convertible. So majority of the convertibles for the 21 model year were 3LT. So those are definitely some very profitable cars for GM when you're talking about the additional few thousand dollars to go with convertible as well as the uh, additional premium there to jump up to 3LT. You can definitely see why GM is probably loving those uh, convertibles. But now speaking of the convertible, if we take a closer look at the breakdown and percentages of the convertible versus coupe, this is some really big news. Um, as mentioned in the title, the convertible has really skyrocketed in popularity. When you look at last year's, um, I think it was 17 and change, almost 18% for the convertible versus the coupe. It was a relatively small number. The vast majority of them were coupes. Uh, now that was also because the production of the convertible did start a little later, but the only reason nobody really questioned that, those figures is previous generation Corvettes with the soft top convertible, it wasn't uncommon to see less than 20% of the cars being convertibles. Um, the soft top convertible was, uh, you know, not a bad option, but it definitely was never near as popular as the coupe. Now with the hard top convertible, I think we're seeing a major shift and I'm, and I'm actually not surprised by this number because some of you may remember when I made the review video of a C8 hardtop convertible 
and I talked about the production numbers for last year, I said I would be shocked if we don't see a major spike in percentage for the convertible over the coupe because um, it's just that good. I really, really found myself loving the C8 convertible uh, with the new hardtop option. So really cool to see that the convertible jumped up such a high percentage, you know, again, 42%. Uh, I want to say that's probably a record. Now, don't quote me on that. I'm, I haven't gone back through every single model year of the Corvette in the past and added up every percentage of every model in the lineup. That would be a whole lot of data to dissect. But 42% on the convertible is a really high figure. So uh, really cool to see that. I think that the convertible is definitely doing well and obviously very profitable for GM. Um, and then again, you can see just the year over year change there collectively. Uh, 31% of the C8 so far produced are convertible, 69% are coupes. Now let's talk a little bit about the exterior colors. Um, there's a lot of data to go through in this guy. So bear with me here. I'm actually going to put together another video talking about more of the options breakdown. Uh, I want to talk more big picture as far as trim level, uh, coupe convertible, and now exterior your colors but we are going to go more in depth into the individual options and percentages on those but looking at the exterior colors here a uh, really big shift for this year that stood out to me is red mist jumped up significantly to third overall with over 3,400 cars uh, being in red mist compared to the color that that sort of replaced um Long Beach Red, that's a huge spike in numbers. So Red Mist was really popular this year. But as you can see, Torch Red, still in the number one color with over 5,000 cars in Torch Red. Arctic White always does very well with over 3,700. And then as you can see through the line, uh, pretty pretty uh, expected numbers. Rapid Blue did also jump up the list a little bit, but that was also because that was delayed production for the 2020 model year. Some of you may remember that was constrained until a little bit later into the production run. But, uh, but yeah, nothing dramatically out of the ordinary with the colors here. I think that we all expected Torch Red to be popular. Arctic White, Black is, are always popular colors. Uh, like I said, to me, the big standout is Red Mist here. That's uh, really cool to see Red Mist doing so well uh, as a new offering. Um, but other than that, guys, you know, again, I'm going to make a more detailed video where we go into all the options. Um, some notable mentions on in terms of options. It does look like uh, Z51 was selected for 23% of cars as a standalone option. Um, Z51 with magnetic ride control for 46%. So collectively, uh, or almost 70% went with Z51 along with magnetic ride control. Uh, magnetic ride control as a standalone option, only 8%. And then just the standard suspension, 23%. So um, pretty cool there. Obviously, a lot of people opting for that. 61% uh, opted for the front end lift. So pretty cool to see that. I think that's a great feature. Again, we're talking. We're going to talk a lot more about specifics on all these different options. It does look like the GT2 seats were by far the most popular with 60%. Um, but yeah, guys, so for now, I'll leave it at that. Don't want to go too far into detail on every single specific here, because like I said, I do have another video coming to talk about all the options. But let me know in the comments below any questions that you have about 21 production, any data that we may, we may be able to uh, go back in the record books to kind of collect and compare if you're interested in. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Was this what you were expecting for the 21 model year? And what are your hopes for the 2022 model year in terms of uh, overall volume and uh, some uh, shakeup there and the popularity of different options, colors, trim levels. Uh, but anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and look forward to talking to you in the next video. Have a great day.